Anybody who's watched my videos recently knows that I'm a big fan of buying older used technology and repurposing it in your home theater. Uh, things like my DCM speakers behind me that I got used uh, that were older, repurpose them here in my home theater. I've done that with a lot of things. My null LED projector, my surround sound receiver, Blu-ray players, whatever. But I'm a big fan of that sort of stuff. And just recently, I actually purchased an item to review here in my home theater, and that is this Panasonic projector. This is an RZ670 projector. It is a laser projector, and I got it for a great bargain, a steal of a deal on eBay. And in this video, I'm going to talk about that and do a little mini review of this, so stay tuned. This is going to be the first in at least two, maybe three videos that I do about that projector. Uh, this one's going to be like a mini review and just kind of some background info about how I bought it uh, and things like that. The second video is going to be about the manual iris that I installed on that lens uh, to improve the contrast ratio. And then the third video is going to be kind of an AB with that projector and my null LED projector on there, kind of talking about the differences and things I see uh, between the two of them. Uh, so that'll be kind of at the end. But here today, this video is just kind of like a mini review and kind of like just background information about how I got this projector. I found this on eBay. Uh, as I always do, I constantly have different projector models and things that I look at on eBay, on Shop Goodwill, on Goodwill Finds, on Facebook Marketplace. I just have the terms, you know, saved in my search history. And I just periodically will look from time to time just to see what's out there. And a batch of these projectors came up from a seller on eBay. So I bought it for $130. The listing was a little vague. It just said unable to turn on. So I wasn't 100% sure what that meant as in they were unable to test it turning on or the unit itself couldn't power on or it powered on but didn't light up like it was very vague and i tried to get some correspondence you know messages back and forth and the seller didn't really answer any of my questions so i was a little hesitant but i did put in a best offer uh for it uh, because originally i think they had this listed for like 170 dollars i believe I put in an offer, he accepted it, so I, I paid $130. Uh, when it actually got here to my house, I you know opened it up and looked at it, tested it out, and it didn't power on. So luckily, as I've mentioned in a few of my other videos in the past, I have a local electronics guy in my small little town that does just some small electronic repairs and fixes and stuff. So I called him up and asked him if he'd take a look at this or if this was something kind of out of his range, you know, to uh, to fix. Long and short of it, he found out somehow the HDMI board got disconnected. So all he had to do was go in there and plug everything back in. He tested all the fans and power supply tested all the ports and everything and said it all worked. So I got it back and all in on that, he charged me $80, which basically was just him cleaning up the fans and plugging in a couple plugs. So it really wasn't much of anything. So yeah, so after the $80 all in, I got it down here and I actually put up another shelf uh, next to my null LED projector, which my wife was not very happy about. This Panasonic is heavy. Uh, I believe it is somewhere between 50 and 60 pounds. It's a beast of a projector. Uh, so you definitely need to make sure if you're buying something like this, you have a way to support it. Uh, I was able to put this other shelf up there just with leftover parts from my first shelf that I built that was lying around the house. And I just put in some real heavy duty wall anchors. It really holds it in there. And the wall anchors I put in are rated for like 130 pounds. So barring somebody jumping up there and trying to do chin-ups off the board, 
that thing should probably stay and I shouldn't have any issues with that. And the standard lens that's on there is motorized. So through the remote or the keypad that's on the side, you can adjust focus and zoom and lens shift all from that. So you don't have to physically move it with like an Allen key like my null projector has. I noticed the lens throw how you can shift it up and down having it sitting right side up provided not enough uh lens shift vertically to get it on my screen from that position and i think that's because these projectors they're made for fixed installations they're supposed to be mounted upside down so you have a greater throw ratio when it's inverted so an upward throw ratio that while it's inverted hanging down would be downwards so if you notice, I had to flip the projector on its head so that the feet are facing upwards and use it that way to get it on my screen. But it worked fine. Once I got it up there, I didn't have an issue with it. Uh, even with moving the lens in and out to play with the iris, hasn't budged the image at all. Uh, I have had to readjust the image slightly because of the different irises that are on there affect kind of the focus initially. But once you get it dialed in, everything's good. So the one area where these high-end DLPs always shine and really hold an advantage over a lot of other projectors is in color reproduction and interesting contrast ratio. So for the color reproduction, this Panasonic is extremely vivid and extremely bright with the colors and the higher levels of luminance. You're going to get very, you know, vibrant pictures on stuff that is in brighter content. My Null LED does produce better color accuracy to my eyes but i think that's because of the led light system it uses so it uses those leds to generate color where the panasonic uses a color wheel so the color isn't as good but it's still really good and it definitely beats out the color reproduction on all my other projectors save for the led projector i have here that i've owned in the past all the other epson's jvc's whatever the Panasonic and these uh, Null LED projectors are like a step above. They're a class above in that aspect. So also interesting contrast ratio. So the black levels may not be as deep as, say, a JVC would have. But when you get the image on the screen of something light and dark on there that has a peak in a valley at the same time, these projectors are able to manipulate that way better and reproduce it way better. And our eye sees it like that, where like the JVCs and Epsons and things are able to either give you bright content or give you dark content. Once you start mixing it in there together, it doesn't produce it as seamlessly. Now, this uh, Panasonic projector and its cousins or whatever you want to say, the other generations of this projector, are kind of unique. They have a laser phosphor light engine. So much like the LED projector that I have here, that laser light engine is set to last for like tens of thousands of hours uh, before it dims or completely breaks to where you can't use it. So you don't have to worry about changing out lamps every thousand hours, 2000 hours or whatever. This thing is highly customizable with that laser light source. So you can actually go through and control the level of light output from 100% light output down to 10% light output. And you can customize it by 0.1% increments. So you have like hundreds or thousands of options in terms of brightness level. And it also has an internal dimming feature. So you can set up either an automatic dimming feature that has steps like one, two, three, that'll adjust the aggressiveness of the dimming based on the content or it has a user manual setting where you can go in and actually select how bright you want it to go how low you want it to go how quickly it'll get to those values will it adjust the gamma along with it to try and maintain the gamma setting so it's highly highly customizable it actually does a fairly good job 
the rated contrast ratio on these units are like 10,000 to one dynamic contrast. So that's going from like the brightest bright to the darkest dark content, which is a little bit misleading. Out the box, standard lens, standard adjustments, even with the dimming settings, you're looking at a max of maybe 500 to 1, if that, native contrast ratio, real world, in what you're watching. Panasonic projectors of this series have interchangeable lenses, so you can pull out the lens, which this unit has just the standard throw ratio lens, and you can get, you know, uh, super short throw angle uh, lenses, you know, super wide angle lenses, you know, long throw distance lenses, all this stuff. And they're all interchangeable. So you can pop them in, pop them out. So one kind of perk of being able to actually remove the lens is you can modify the lens if you're tech savvy enough. And so what I did is I added an iris to the back of the lens, which drastically increases the contrast ratio. Now, I just did it on the very back of the actual projector lens. I just stuck my makeshift iris on the back of the lens and then put it back in there. If you're even more tech savvy, which I don't know if I'm comfortable enough doing this, you can actually break the lens down and go into the different elements and slide the iris closer to the center of the lens, which is going to give you the best contrast ratio because the image is going to be shrunk down the most there. So you can really make a very aggressive, very tiny iris at that point that would really give you some good results on the AVS form, which will be linked below. There's some people who've actually talked about doing that, that have gotten like some really, really good, you know, over 10,000 to one contrast ratio by doing that. But that I think is a little more advanced for me. Uh, but doing what I did, just putting this makeshift iris on the back of the lens and then sticking it back in there. After some trial and error, I had to play around to find, because of my lens shift settings, had to find where the image was actually projecting through the lens at the right angle to make sure it got in there properly so I wasn't covering up part of the image. But I did notice a pretty drastic difference in the contrast ratio and more so the deepness of the black levels from having that on there you know so i've at least doubled or more uh the contrast ratio of what i've seen on this uh just by applying that iris to the back these panasonic projectors as i said are commercial projectors they're actually not made for home theater use and because of that, this Panasonic projector is not a native uh, 1080p projector in that it's not 1920 by 1080. This one is actually 1920 by 1200. So it's a little bit bigger than a standard 16.9 screen. But there's a setting in there where you can set it to 16.9, and so it crops out those extra lines of image that would normally project above or below the image on your screen. If you set it up to 16.9 instead of 16.10 for the image, nothing is gonna be projected there. And unless you have like a white wall or something behind your screen, which I don't advise doing, uh, you're not gonna notice anything. But that is one thing to factor in, you know, that you've gotta find that setting. Otherwise your image is gonna look weird on, you know, a normal 16 by nine projector screen. So just think about that if you're ever interested in buying one of these. So uh, that leads me to the end of the video. I am gonna have a few other videos coming out with this projector, as I said in the intro. I'm gonna do a video talking more about how I actually made the iris that I put on the back of the lens and my trial and error with stuff on there. And then I'm also gonna do kind of an A-B comparison video with this and my null LED projector once I get everything fully set up, all the settings to my liking, and then, uh, you know, really kind of do A-B and hopefully show some footage of all that, you know, and kind of do it. I'm also toying with the idea of doing another, like, demo video thing. So, 
you know, just using that projector instead of my null. But we'll see how it goes. So, anyways, I don't want to ramble on too much more. I've done enough of that already. So, uh, as I always like to say, I really appreciate everyone who's watched my videos and liked and subscribed. Uh, you know, I'm getting close to that thousand sub milestone, you know, which I'm really hoping to get to. So, I really do appreciate it. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.